morning, everyone. Welcome back to my backyard. And uh, we're going to go through salinity this morning. And let me share my screen with all of you. Okay, so salinity is just a term that describes the saltiness of the water. And uh, well, let's be honest, I'm missing baseball. Maybe some of you are missing baseball as well. But if you take a look at the top left-hand corner, you can see that the salts in the ocean are about 3.5%. Now, in calculating percentages, 3.5% uh, would be 3.5 out of 100%. Now you take a look at the next number over, um, it's 35 parts per thousand. And so the uh, descriptor at the end of that would be PPT for parts per thousand. And if you think about it, it's uh, very similar to a uh, baseball uh, batting average. So let's say you've got this incredible hitter and uh, that person is batting 500, that means out of a thousand times at bat, uh, they get on base 500 times or 500 hits. And so as you take a look at our example of water, out of a thousand parts of water, 965.2 parts are H2O uh, and 34.8 grams of that uh, would be the dissolved solids. Now out of those dissolved solids, you can see there are primarily two, and those two ultimately, if you were to evaporate the water, uh, would leave uh, salts. And so the two primary salts are chloride and sodium. You can see them there in the second pie chart at 19.2 grams and 10.2 grams. But in the water, water is just awesome. You know, it dissolves basically everything. Some of the other dissolved properties are sulfate, uh, SO4, magnesium, uh, calcium, which is going to become important when we talk about how shells form, potassium, and then there's a variety of others. But overall, the seawater in the ocean ranges from about 33 parts per thousand to about 38 parts per thousand. Uh, we're going to take a look at the surface salinities of our planet. I'm going to sort of describe some of the patterns that we can see. As you take a look at the ocean, and the salinities, you can see on the right-hand side, you've got color-coded, where 33, again, somewhat of a lower salinity, uh, and then in the red, somewhat of a higher salinity on the right-hand side. So let's briefly talk about what can happen to either make the salinity high in red or make it low in blue. Well, blue is more fresh water, so any time that you add fresh water, it's going to be more blue. So if you take a look at areas that have more rain, like near the Arctic, you're gonna have more blue. In the same way, when ice melts, uh, you're gonna have more fresh water, and it too is going to become more blue. Uh, similarly, when you have a bunch of rain, uh, that too is going to, again, cause the salinity to be on a trend towards fresh water. Now, for water to uh, be very, very salty, uh, the primary way in which that occurs is through evaporation. And so areas near 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south tend to have higher salinities because there's more evaporation. So that's just a couple examples of how we can interpret some of these patterns that we see. Along the west coast, again, there's rivers that are adding to the water. Also, there's more precipitation near 60 degrees north and 60 degrees south. So whenever you have more rain, uh, ultimately you're gonna have lower salinities. One interesting aspect though, is you take a look at the Atlantic Ocean uh, in comparison to the Pacific Ocean, you have higher salinities in the Atlantic and lower salinities in the Pacific. Well, again, if we go back to that idea of precipitation, the Pacific Ocean is bigger, and so you're gonna have larger storms. And when you have more storms that can be over the ocean for a longer period of time, ultimately your salinity will be again a little bit lower. So let's do a little bit of a comparison about how the salinity changes with depth. So that change is called the halo climb. So halo uh, comes from the root word halite and uh, halite is a mineral which actually is just salt 
and Klein means change. So the change that we see uh, are given in two different examples. Let's talk about the high latitudes first. So a high latitude, again, would be like 60 degrees, which you just mentioned. So at the surface, you have a salinity that is lower. And then as you transition down through 1,000 meters, you have this halo climb and the salinity increases because the overall average salinity of the oceans um, is about 35. Now we take a low latitude example here. Again, low latitude, uh, somewhat near 30 degrees, uh, what you would consider the tropics. There's a high evaporation, so the surface salinity is higher. And then as you go down through 1,000 meters in depth, you have, again, a change. But this change now is going from 37 to 35. So again, these are examples of uh, salinity versus depth. Uh, I just put it in a chart so that you can sort of interpret it. One of the big concepts of why, why is there more uh, of a higher salinity uh, near the equatorial regions and the tropics and why as you go to the poles are there you know lower salinities. And so on the bottom of this particular slide you have again a comparison of where the precipitation occurs um, and so your poles you typically have increased precipitation and there's also this area right near the equator where you can also have uh, increased precipitation but you also have a tremendous amount of evaporation. Now as we get to the end of our semester and we're starting to take a look at sort of large-scale weather patterns, uh, we'll go into this idea in just a little bit more detail. Now we're going to sort of break it up as we take a look at coastlines and we're going to sort of put this, you know, maybe you could even create for yourself a little table of uh, the salinities and then the terms given to those particular salinities. So freshwater is anything that has less than one parts per thousand, which you can see here. And as a river flows into the ocean, what you're gonna see is a transition. And so that transition water is just called brackish water. You can see it's anywhere from one parts per thousand to 33 parts per thousand. But later this week, we're gonna be looking at estuaries. And uh, within the estuary, you're gonna have a range of in the 20s to the 30s. Now you've got salts are, are sort of hard, you know, uh, in terms of uh, plants and living organisms. And we wanna understand what is the salinity uh, and sort of how that salinity can change. And then there's gonna be these groups of organisms that actually can live within that range. So again, fresh water is less than one part per thousand. Uh, brackish water is one to 33 parts per thousand. And just regular uh, open ocean is anywhere from 33 to 38. But we've got some unique areas on our planet where we can have hyper saline areas. So in other words, there's super high salinities, salinities that are greater than 38 parts per thousand. Oftentimes it's gonna be near a tropical area or 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south because there's gonna be a lot of evaporation. And then possibly you have a landlocked body of water. Now, a couple examples that I just wanna give you and you can take a look and try to figure out where they are on the planet. But in the United States, uh, we've got the Great Salt Lake. You can see the top picture there is of that region and all the salt right next to that. We've got the Dead Sea. Um, the Black Sea, the Aerial Sea, and uh, all of these are hypersaline areas. And uh, definitely there's a restricted water flow. And um, hopefully maybe uh, once this travel ban uh, and uh, the stay at home is occurring, you can uh, take a trip and uh, maybe go see Salt Lake. So that's a pretty good overview of salinity and uh, I will be sharing uh, estuaries coming up next.